Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome to my rigging channel. We are in part 5 of my facial rigging tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to add custom shapes to some of our controls. So, I've actually went ahead and created some custom shapes already. If I go to my armature panel and under display options and turn on shapes, you'll notice that now my bones look like uh, other objects. So I have a pretty simple binocular-like structure for my eye target, some simple circles for my eyes, some simple um, triangles for my eyelid controls. I'm going to show you the techniques uh, to create custom shapes for your bones. I'm just going to do one of them um, just to save some time and show you the process. So I'm going to do this for the um, deaf head bone. I'm going to select it. The first thing I like to do is do shift S cursor to selected and that will put the cursor at the head of the bone that I have selected. Then I can do shift A and add the mesh that's going to create my custom shape for that bone. I'm going to just select a circle. I'll rename the circle to test. And now what I'd like to do is take my circle and align the axes of the circle with the axes of the bone. Let me just select the bone here quick. Go to bone properties. With a deaf bone selected, I can just type test in here. And now my bone is selecting or, or displaying as this um, test object. Now you'll notice that it's going sideways here. So the first thing I like to do is to select my mesh and align the axes of the mesh with the axes of the bone. So if I go to um, display options and turn on axes, notice that the Z is going up, Y is going back, X is right to left. But if I select the bone itself, the Z is going forward, Y is going up, and X is going right to left. So I like to take this mesh, do our X90, and then now the axes of the, um, the object are aligned with the axes of the bone. Another thing I like to do is scale this down, not quite on top of um, the way the bone is displaying that at, at the moment, because it's if you go right on top of it, it's hard to select these, so I'll just scale that down slightly. And you'll notice that all the object transforms, in changing the location, changing the scale, and changing the rotation does not actually change the way the bone is displaying. If you want to, after you've got everything aligned like this, the location, rotation, and scale of your mesh object, now if we tab into edit mode, if we do RX90 to spin these um, vertices flat, and then GZ, drag this up, you'll see that we have real-time control. I can actually scale these down a little bit. We have real-time control over the way um, our bone is displaying that object. So this is one of the only situations in Blender, very, one of the very few, where I will tell you not to apply the transforms of your um, mesh object. So this is our display. Um, we're not actually rigging um, our circle, our test object, um, to this. So do not apply transforms. If I did Control A, let me just show you what happens. Apply the location, rotation, and scale. Notice that the uh, it screwed up um, what we just uh, set up there. Let me just back this up. Undo that. All right. So again, one of the only times where you don't want to apply transforms for your um, objects. But aligning these, the location, rotation, and scale is going to be very helpful. You'll get re real time feedback when you um, manipulate that object in edit mode, and you can set up your control shape there. And that's really basically it for um, creating control shapes. You can as I mentioned, create control shapes um, to look like anything you want. Let me get rid of this test object, X to eat, and under bone properties, I can just uncheck the custom shape. Now we're back to normal. Now a few other things that can help you when creating um, custom bone shapes. I actually have a bone file where I, I've set up a bunch of um, bone shapes that I use in a lot of my uh, other rigs. And just to save time where I don't have to create new objects every time I rig something that's new, I can actually go into that file and create a group. And then I've appended that group for the objects that I thought would be useful for this rig um, to this file. So that is why all of these objects are green, but they are just simple um, mesh objects. So that can save you a lot of time if you have a dedicated widget file. And speaking of widgets, you'll notice that each one of these mesh objects is named WGT, and that is for widget. It just helps me um, find that in my scene. Another useful thing that you can do, um, as you can imagine, for every control that you have, you know, you're going to need a separate mesh object um, for that control shape. 
and that can add up quite quickly. So what I like to do is add an empty object. I've named mine WGTOC for Outliner Cleanup. I've taken all those objects and parented them to that empty object, and then that will clean up my outliner here. So all of these objects are now um, parented or children of that. So your outliner can get very messy if you don't do that. Let's go back to our armature. Now that we have some control shapes set up for most of our bones, I actually want to make a dedicated control for my deformations, uh, deformation bone for the head and the neck. So I have been manually or um, directly manipulating this deformation bone for that. I want to change that now and give it a um, dedicated control. I'm going to select Def Neck and Def Head in Edit Mode, Shift D and GX. I'm just going to drag this out just so it's a little bit easier to work on so I can see it, select things nicer. I'll name this top one to head, bottom one to neck, and I also want to resize these, but these bones are actually connected. Uh, they're in a connected chain, so I want to disconnect this top, but I don't want to change the parenting. I just want to disconnect it from the neck bone. So with the head selected, I can um, simply uncheck this, and now I can rescale these um, down, G, X, drag these back, just so it's a little bit nicer here where I have a bunch of nested bones on top of each other, and I've been able to keep the axes uh, aligned here. And go back to pose mode, take our new controls, and let's add them to our control bone group, assign them, let's assign our new custom controls that are pre-made. I always like to check wireframe, I'll show you why here in a minute. WGT, and do H for head, quickly find that. Let me select the neck, again check wireframe, WGT, N for neck. And the reason you want to check this wireframe, you remember way back in the first tutorial, I set the maximum draw type for my armature to wire. So if I go to solid, and I want you to notice here if I uncheck this, is this display, um, this custom shape is going to disappear if I uncheck that wireframe. And the reason for that is this object that's making that custom shape really has no thickness. It's just um, vertices and edges. And when you have that situation, those um, control shapes can disappear on you. So that's why you'll want to always check that wireframe option so it doesn't. Now, notice, because I am now in solid mode, if I go to wireframe, it will reappear. So you can always do that to check it in case that happens to you and you lose your bone. The other thing you can do is go to your armature panel and just temporarily turn off your custom shapes for all of your bones. Then you can find that bone that disappeared on you, select it, go back to... Um, the armature or the bone properties and check your wireframe option. So that is why that is important to always check wireframe for your custom control um, shapes. Now I need an additional bone here. Let me just turn shapes back on. I'm going to select the head bone in edit mode, shift D, G, X, drag on a new one, R, X, negative 90, lay the stone flat so this bone is aligned with the axes of the world. Parent this to our deaf head bone. Control P. Keep offset. This is going to be my face options. This will be important for the next tutorial that we do, or I do. Now if I go back to pose mode, because I duplicated it from this head, it's also duplicated the um, custom shape. I just need to change this. So I have a custom face options bone. It's, it is displaying um, this mesh object. Then I have converted a text object to a mesh object. Now let's see here. We have our control bones are not actually controlling our deformation bones, so we need to add a copy transforms to copy the transforms of our head. So select head, shift select def head, shift control C, copy transforms. Rinse and repeat for the neck, copy transforms, and now our head control will actually manipulate our deformation bone. And our deformation is just copying the transforms of our control. Alright, something else I'd like to do is have a dedicated layer only for my deformation bones. So I'm going to take the red controls here and hide them with H. 
then I can select all my deformation balloons, type M, and move them to their own layer. To Alt H to unhide those bones. And the reason this is important is I would like to use a combination of control shapes and B bones. So if I just click on B bone display with just my deformation bones um, selected up here, I can go to B bone display. Now this isn't very helpful. All these bones are very large, so I'm going to select them all, and I can resize them with Control Alt and S, and scale these down something a little bit more appropriate. I will just select the deformation bones for the eyelids scale those down quite a bit more maybe scale the cheek deformation bones down slightly and now I can use a combination of control bones and deformation bones whenever I move uh, manipulate the control I can see the results of the deformation bones here now this is also very important um, when you're using segmented bones so if I select the neck go to bone properties and under um, B bones or bendy bones there is a segment option. If I click this, I'm going to add eight segments to the neck. Now, B bones is just a display type. There's nothing special about them, but it is the only display type where you can actually see the segments of your bones. So, um, segmented bones will work in any display type, but you just can't see the results unless you're in B bone display. So, if, even if I go to octahedral, there's no difference in the deformation. It's just the difference uh, for us to actually see the, um, what's happening on those um, segments. So that is why I like to separate my, one of the reasons I like to separate my controls from my deformation bones. It might seem like a little bit of extra work, but that is very useful to do it this way. I think that's pretty much it for um, custom bone shapes. And we are set for our next tutorial. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, good luck.